everyone. Ah, oh, well, you already know what I've been up to today. I've been telling you about it for the last four, five, or six days. So, I've been arranging my grabber. Uh, it's going great. Um, yeah, it, it, it's it's successful. Things are moving. It's feeling really good. There's a there's a um, there's a whole. I feel like we've turned a corner in a number of in a number of ways. Um. That being said, I, there was something that came through this morning, and I was kind of, it was really curious because I it was I want to describe it and then sort of like maybe reflect on it a little bit because it was a, it was an example of how. This this thing that I've declared to myself more than anything, about what my, what the foundation is of 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 not just my creative work but of my life, and. I feel like I've, I, you know, I, I've talked about gaining clarity about the fact that a spiritual practice is at the center, and I, and, and as soon as I put that at the center, everything else started to move. Everything else started to fall into line. Other priorities became very clear. Um, it became a like it's, it's almost like you know, if there's a way in which our life seems to require a lot of energy to organize it um, and to stay on top of everything that we need to stay on top of doing that make getting clarity about what's number one for me and then really kind of just putting a flag in the sand and saying a flag in the ground and saying this is this is it this is the thing that is really at the at the top this is really the number one thing it took away that excess energy that everything else was requiring. It was like by, by simply by doing that one action, and very often that one action is one that requires a tremendous power of, of, of decision. It's, it's something that may feel, not saying it necessarily will, but it may feel very threatening because it challenges our habitual identity. It challenges the identity that we subconsciously, usually, semi-consciously, maybe sometimes, are are attached to and saying this is number one is like jettisoning all of the baggage that keeps us attached to that to this identity that we're sort of ready to let go of so and that can be a that can be an intense energetic moment an intense energetic process of of really getting real about what we're letting go of um so anyway, you know, that's, I'm recapping because it's relevant to what happened today. So this morning, well, so, so yesterday I had a, had a great day, long day, um, but very exciting. Everything went very smoothly, very successfully. It felt like a, a good day's work. Um, right at the end of the day, there's been a little, just a little bit of, not really tension, just kind of like figuring things out with one of the music collaborators that I'm working with. Um, he, there was some delays in getting him rolling. And now yesterday he finally like really got rolling. And so then it was like, okay, well, what do I need to deliver? How much does he need? And I woke up, I, I went to bed last night. And right before I went to bed, I sent him another, uh, another chart. I was like, might as well send it now. I could wait till the morning because he's probably not going to get to it, but I might as well send it now. Well, I sent it and I woke up this morning to a text message and an email that it, that he'd completed the work. And that's amazing, but it also sort of put me in this place of like, oh, I should be on the ball. I need to send him more. So I woke up this morning before I did my Qigong and my meditation practice, and I'm getting texts and I and I engaged with that. I took I, I started responding to the texts. I went and f f on my phone, went into my files and sent off another document and then communicated about it to the, to both the composer and the, and the other guy and spent a good 20, 30 minutes texting and emailing before I did Qigong or uh, meditated. And as soon as I started doing Qigong, I immediately felt a, a very intense psychological tension. And I, it didn't take me long to work out that 
I mean, that's probably the first time I've ever done that in the last year, maybe. Maybe even longer. It's the first time I've ever woken up and spent a half hour doing admin on my phone before doing Qigong or meditating. And because part of the whole thing of making those things number one is actually defining a space and time in my day when they happen and defending that against anything else that might be trying to encroach. Because you don't, if your foundation of your building is not solid, you don't go up to the 15th floor and start cleaning the windowsills. You don't do that. You stay and you fix the foundation before you go upstairs and start working on other things. And that, and so I sat there and I was like, oh no, I let the urgency of this work violate that sacred space that I've been so good about about defending and about um, just prioritizing, and that was so 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 that was kind of the the long and short of it in terms of my realization of that. You know, then I um, I did settle in. I actually had a great Qigong session. I still had enough time. I, I and I, I chipped away at my time. I got up nice and early because I sl I went to bed early last night. I had a nice long sleep. Got up nice and early. I was like, oh, great. I've got time to do a real Qigong session and to meditate before Annalise most likely is going to wake up. And I chipped away. I chipped 30 minutes out of that away. And I was like, oh, now I'm just, now it's just kind of like a normal day. Now I'm actually kind of tight on time. Um, so I just, I, I realized how powerfully it affected me just to do a little thing that was that was you know staying on top of things and just trying to be like feeling like okay I don't want to be the bottleneck here I want to make sure that I that I'm moving that I'm that everything I'm doing is on time that everything that, that I'm you know that I'm able to lead the process um and not feel like other people are like I'm falling down on the, on the job for other people or slowing other people down and but but just that little bit of that little bit of time made such a huge impact on my practice. And, and, you know, luckily I caught that and then I was able to kind of realize, Oh, that's what's happening. Gotta be really rigorous about that. Um, and also, you know, the thing is then if you think it through, there are implications to that because of course, it's also going to stress me out if I'm conscious of the fact that I'm the bottleneck on something and I haven't delivered what I need to, uh, you know, and in this case, it wasn't like I was delinquent at all. It was just, I wanted to make sure that I had, I wasn't stopping the flow. Um, but I, but, but so in other words, that's also relevant to my spiritual practice, because if that's not organized, it's going to intrude. On my on my psychic face, I'm gonna I'm gonna sit in meditation and go. Oh, did I send him that score? Did he have? Does he is he sitting idle waiting for stuff? You know, it 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 active. It's gonna activate in my psyche a distraction, which then in as a meditator and as a spiritual practitioner, I can then let that go and stay with my breath and stay with my body and do the you know do the practice. But the truth is that level of organization and that level of being really being really um up on everything even in my non seemingly non-spiritual just day-to-day -day work life has a massive impact on that spiritual practice and so that's, again, this is just me kind of clocking both what that experience did of, of feeling like I sort of like violated that space and also what the implication is, because I think it would have also felt weird for me to get that, get, see that flurry of texts this morning and then ignore them because, you know, there are people working in other time zones who are, their day has started and it's like they, if, if I'm, 
if I take, you know, if I take two or three hours to respond to something, then that's gonna, there's, there's just no way that I could do that with peace of mind. So I guess what I'm saying is it's all connected. All that stuff is connected. And so, um, as I, so part of saying my priority is, a, is spiritual practice, my priority is spiritual evolution in this life and, and really delineating and committing to the practices that make that feel that, that, that make that true, part of that is also paying equal attention to everything else and making sure that that gets taken care of because otherwise it will impinge, you know, otherwise it will create problems. And that's something that I can certainly recognize from other areas of my life. And, and there, there's any number of ways in which this has manifested in the past and probably still does to some extent where, where I'm, I'm allowing little things to eat away at overall integrity, even if it's little ways. And by doing so, I am actually compromising the foundation. I'm not just, um, I'm not just, the fact that, that, that this is not my spiritual practice doesn't mean that those things aren't having an effect on my spiritual practice. And I think that's something that I'm, that I'm tracking. And, you know, this morning it was really just, it was this kind of intense feeling of, no, I, 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 I let, now I don't have time for the most important thing. And it was like, oh yeah. So what does that imply? What does that offer me as a, as a, as a way of prioritizing everything else? you know, you know, in a way that would be helpful to, to making sure that I honor what is highest for me, you know, honoring what really is highest also involves honoring other, the other things. I mean, you can't, I can't just throw them out the window. A, that's not ethical in some cases. And B, it's going to have an effect on my psyche. It's not going to feel good. It's not going to, it's not going to give me the peace of mind that I'm saying is so important to me. So anyway, it's where I'm at today, people. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. I, uh, yeah, I, you, this conversation, as I always say, is so, so significant, especially in times like this where I'm going like a bat out of hell in, in, on any number of levels to have this moment of, of kind of reset and connecting with people who I know care and are holding a similar space to, to me, to what I'm holding overall, it's just massive. So thank you. Love you. I'll see you tomorrow.